You are listening to Press A Gaming Podcast, hosted by Zephyr Zero, presented by Realm of the Mist. citizens of the realm welcome back once again to another press a gaming podcast i'm your host zephyr zero and today i am joined as always by wild high 77 it's absurd yet flaccid and anvil the all-consuming flame of gluttony once again another episode two in a row we are joined by ua hey guys what's going on and Uh once again uh Joining us from last episode, we are joined by Dusty in Salem. Holy shit, we're back. Oh my god. Why did they do that? Oh my god, what a horrible idea. <laughs> that was a great idea. Who are you kidding? Because all, all right. shows need to close eventually. <laughs> so I, I, I think I think we telegraphed this with the last episode because, you know, we, we, just, we, just, we couldn't stop talking about it. Uh, obviously we're doing yet another genre breakdown, but this time we're going for the big J, JRPGs. My dick isn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been waiting so long for this. this the big B has been waiting for the big J. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. We're not talking about Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, despite how much I want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... JRPGs is definitely deserving of its own episode in the genre breakdown because while it is still a role-playing game, uh, JRPGs have a lot of elements and tropes to them that sets it apart from Western RPGs like Skyrim or Baldur's Gate or insert Dungeons & Dragons-based RPG here. You mean Neverwinter? That, that, yeah, yeah. That's actually one we didn't mention on the RPG episode. What I'm actually are we disappointed. doing? I'm actually disappointed in myself we didn't mention Neverwinter. <laughs> Otherwise um, known as Brazil. However, <laughs> however, JRPGs could also find its uh, find its roots in Dungeons and well, Dragons. The first yes. Final Fantasy was only a Dungeons oh, and Dragons yeah. game. Yeah. But, uh, RPGs are known for being more linear storytelling with with the role playing elements than uh, Western RPGs because, like, obviously in, in like Skyrim or Fallout and all that, you've got your massive open world and you've got your main quest, but like all of your side quests are like equal priority. Whereas for a JRPG, it's a lot more linear usually. Of very rarely you'll get like an open world overworld map or something, and uh, you can go other places. But a lot of times with JRPGs, uh, the places you're not supposed to go are going to be super over leveled. I was about to say. I mean, I'm thinking. I'm thinking back in the older days and the over overworld maps and the uh, random encounters. You could go anywhere you wanted, just you paid the consequences of stepping outside your level. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times in fantasy too. I would be like, "Okay, I'm not supposed to be here." And it, it, it's, it's, it's there in some Western RPGs for like the, the the stepping out of a place of your level, but it's not nearly as common uh, for JRPGs because more often than not, uh, there will almost always be like some overworld item or something blocking your way that you have to complete a certain quest in order to clear or get to a certain point in the story for that to clear or it will just be a massive monster that you are just not equipped to handle at that at the given time <laughs> that it just says basically it's a giant neon sign saying fuck you you're not supposed to be here <laughs> <laughs> yeah Again, with Final Fantasy two, neon sign too. You'd be take you'd be running around the first castle, whatever, taking on like vampire thorns and and bees, and you know one hit them and being fine. You go into a forest that's right next door, 
and all of a sudden you're taking on shit that fucking like murder hobos you with <laughs> the initiative. Like they didn't even roll attack; it, the initiative killed you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know that. But like that—that is—that is such a JRPG trope right there. Is just walking into an area that you are not supposed to be and staring at like double digit level being like and it was at that moment he knew he fucked up fucked up (laughs) (laughs) and i mean you you get that even when you get to end game properties of certain jrpgs like with final fantasy 15 for me one of the biggest things that threw my ass for a loop was after I beat the game, I went back to do a lot of the side quest stuff, and I faced off against the two-hour battle against the huge tortoise mountain. And it literally took me two and a half hours of button pressing and mashing just to put half of di- half the life bar out of this thing. And it didn't matter how high you were and how much weapons and items you had. Yeah, it helped, but I mean... You're still spending a gross amount of time beating this damn thing. So I've never played Final Fantasy XV, yeah. but you just said Turtle Mountain, and now I'm willing to spend like 30 bucks just to see it. It's yeah. such a... <laughs> <laughs> and here's, here's, here's the thing that really got my attention, because I watched some other people... Aside from Turtle Mountain, go well, ahead. Well, no, I watched other people do this to see if it actually took two and a half hours. This monster will batch you so far across the map that it despawns the the boss, and that life bar goes all the way back to full. Oh, wow. Jeez. Yeah, you want to fuck you monster, that's a fuck you monster. That, yeah. that sounds that sounds broken as fuck. Like, like that, that, sounds like, that sounds like something right out of Dark Souls. But, I was going to say, that sounds like Dark Souls shit right there. But would, it compare, <laughs> but would it compare, the Turtle Mountain really compare to the American weapons of Final Fantasy VII? Ruby and Emerald. Oh, I hate you for that. <laughs> oh God, I I still can't beat Ruby. I I I've been playing Final Fantasy VII on the Switch for like the last three months. I still can't beat Ruby Weapon. I and I I admit it was because of early game choices that I made and decided not to pick up. But God, that month that is such a bitch of a secret boss. Time to hit that reset button there, buddy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Yep, start a whole new playthrough. Like, oh my god, that that's another super JRPG trope, is giving you, like, billions of save files so that you can save in each step of your journey, so if you fuck up and miss something, you can go back and fix it. Yeah, but that feels like a cheat to me. I'm sorry. And I never utilized it. That that is the whole point of like having ninety nine save files. Like I utilize, I am utilizing that right now with uh, Persona <coughs> Five. Uh, granted, it doesn't give me ninety nine save files; it only gives me like twenty, but or twenty five. But like, I am going over and and dropping to the next level to overwrite my save file, and, and I'm overlapping a little bit. But like. If you miss something and you save over after you've missed it, it's it's a game breaker. Like you well, have to start the game over. It's not necessarily a game breaker cuz like in the example of Ruby and Emerald Weapon from Final Fantasy 7, those were constituted as being secret bosses. They weren't necessary in order to complete the game. But if you wanted to 100% it, you needed to beat them. And if you didn't get all of the stuff that you needed in order to beat them early on in the game, you done fucked up, son. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But there there are some JRPGs out there that, like, if you miss a, a picking up something somewhere, it, can, it has catastrophic consequences for your save file. Woo, uh, a bone hobo pants! <laughs> okay, Anvil. Sure, sure. All right. Well, I've I got some JRPG years. We here. have our first derail. Right, we got we got some JRPG years here, and uh, I'm going to show my age a little bit. But we maybe we could sit here and s- settle an age-old debate. Final Fantasy VI versus Fantasy Star Two. Greatest RPG of all time. Um, 
I would actually have to say. Back. Give me a little time to reboot. I, I would actually have to say that um, neither of them would be the greatest JRPG of all time. Are you? I, I'm sorry, guys. We we had a little technical difficulty on our end, so we actually missed the question. Can you repeat it, please? Sure. Uh, the age-old bad debate it goes all the way back from the Super NES and Genesis days. As far as at at least at that time, the greatest RPG of all time. Greatest RPG of all time, Shining Tears. You're welcome. Well, the 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 the, 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 the fight that the fight was between uh, Final Fantasy VI and Fantasy Star Two. Fantasy Star 2, you're welcome. <laughs> I abstain from answering that question because I didn't play either. Blasphemy. I've got Fantasy Star. If you want to hang out more often, you can just play it. I yeah, wish, right man. There. You know. That's too bad you don't live out here. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but uh, I actually preferred Fantasy Star Universe to uh, you're not Fantasy, real, Star <laughs> Fantasy Star 2. I actually prefer Universe over online, but over Fantasy Star 2? No, I, I enjoyed Fantasy Star 2. I enjoyed the hell out of Fantasy Star 2. The, 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 the only thing that annoyed me about Fantasy Star Universe was that they shut down the fucking servers on me. You can still play okay, the offline game. I, I, I can understand that. Yeah, you can still play the offline game, but like... There's so much stuff from the online part portion that was that was a lot of fun, and like... You, you, you can't do that no more. You only have the the, the uh, offline storyline. Fair enough. Did we lose some comp uh, competitors here? No, no, we didn't no, lose. no, no, no. We're, we're like, like like I said, we we dealt with some technical difficulties on our end, so we're making do with uh, makeshift. So I think it's time to masturbate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Helping him. Up, up, down, <laughs> down, left, right, left, right, select, start. Oh, I'm gone! Oh, oh, I forgot B.A. I didn't want him to finish that fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's a shower. He's not an entertainer. Oh, shit, we're not a grower. <laughs> <laughs> I sure can't. Uh. So, right. well, if if I may, let's can we stay on the topic of Final Fantasy for just a minute? Who's it's what is everyone's favorite to. Final Fantasy title? Seven. One. Ugh. I've only played one, so I'm gonna go with one. Okay. I don't know. I really, I really liked eight. I, I liked the ability of like junctioning all the different spirits and and effects. Anybody? Anybody? I don't think I have a favorite, but I definitely have a least favorite. Oh, I have a feeling I know what this is going to be. Ten. Crystal Chronicles. Huh. Uh, severely disappointed by that game. See, I never, I never really played the ones that were not necessarily directly uh, sequels. Oh, hey, hey, hang on. Can I, can I change my answer for favorite Final Fantasy game? Sure. Yeah. Kingdom. <laughs> Jeff, go home, you're drunk. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll touch base on that in a minute because that I deserve I feel deserves its own mini segment. But You cannot I, convince me that Kingdom Hearts is not a Final Fantasy game. See, I've been waiting for I've been waiting forever <laughs> for them to remaster the original Final Fantasy. Like I don't mean the GBAs and, and uh and play uh, PSP <laughs> versions, but I mean like an actual true to form update <laughs> of the original game. But I think I think arguably the most underrated Final Fantasy game, like truly underrated, I think is twelve. Yeah, I'll agree with you on that. One hundred percent agree with that. And uh, I I never actually played twelve, but I I would a hundred percent agree with that statement. I can't even count that high, so don't even ask me. Okay, I like twelve a lot. Twelve was good. Now, this, twelve. 12 12 had uh, 12 was good and 12 had some spin-off games for some other uh, consoles that were pretty good like Final Fantasy uh, Revenant Wings for the Nintendo DS which was, was basically awesome. Final Fantasy Tech just with yeah. Final Fantasy 12 characters. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love I, that I think game. Final Fantasy 12 was actually the first Final Fantasy I ever played all the way through. I remember buying the collector's um, edition just to get the history of Final Fantasy DVD. 
I'm Captain Bash from Dalmasca. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my favorite Don't shop on the Citadel. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking oh my god, last one? episode not mentioned ma la Mass Effect at all. Oh my god. God. <gasps> I have oh. God. We, we, just, we just pissed off Anvil in the worst way possible. <laughs> we completely, oh my we completely God. glossed over Mass Effect on the RPG episode. <laughs> How did that happen? That's bullshit. It wasn't until I made a joke I even realized it's like, holy shit, we never once mentioned Mass Effect. Oh man, we should. Oh, we should have never said anything. <laughs> oh, we have to redo the whole episode. It's all there's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, favorite Final Fantasy for me is probably going to be 7. The first one that I completed all the way through was Crisis Core. Um, now, if you want a Final Fantasy that'll give you feels, Crisis Core will just straight up fuck you up. I'm not, uh, I'm not playing you for feels, man. Yeah. But isn't that kind of the point of a JRPG? Because it's always about heart and, and love and and shit like that. Like, of course, you got fucking mech mutants and super so monsters. Does the guy who has a picture of what on his phone? Dracula, his wife, and the baby little kid. I, I do you want to consider that a JRPG? Oh, yeah, Konami. I will, okay. I will <laughs> say, I will I say it, might, it might not be a Final Fantasy game, but my favorite Final Fantasy meme is uh, Sabin suplexing the ghost train. <laughs> nice. I think um, I never played RPGs for that for that awesome combat that they do, and then I just I just love I just love it when the cutscenes are nothing but a text box and the character standing next to it. I don't know. I was never a JRPG kind of guy, and I never I never got into it. I, I might be very quiet this episode. I don't think you can be quiet. You're right. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's just so hard to, 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 to choose because I mean like besides Final Fantasy and Fantasy Star I, I'm sure there, there's people out there that'll be like oh my god I got a full freaking half a uh, copy book filled with titles of JRPGs but to, to me it's like I can only a handful of them really and most of them are Final uh, Fantasy like Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy Star uh, Xeno Saga Final Final Fantasy, Fantasy Star, Xena Saga, uh, Star Ocean, uh, Lunar the Silver Star Story. Yep. Um, Dragon Quest, uh, Dragon Quest Monsters. Because that's two different series, actually. Um, Me. Dragon Quest Monsters is basically Dragon uh, Dragon Quest Pokemon. Yeah, but you you, you can't. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think that. I don't like think that. that I, don't think I don't think that fairly that. classifies. That's like considering World of Final Fantasy an RPG. They're they're two different. They're two different games. It's still an RPG. It's just it's different combat system. Yeah. So it's 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 a different series in and of itself. I disagree. <laughs> but uh, it, it's same genre, different different series made by the same people um let's see what other jrpgs can i uh the tales tales of series well uh, we already touched it on a little bit with kingdom hearts yeah kingdom hearts uh of course kingdom hearts and then of course we have zephyr's guilty pleasure of the persona series that's not even a guilty pleasure. <laughs> well, what about some of, what, what about about the, the other ones series. that are forgotten about for uh, over the ages like parasite eve Oh yes. Yeah. There's an RPG with guns. Golden Sun. Golden Sun, yeah. I did love Golden Sun. Uh I I've I've there was the first time I played that game, I stayed up for four days straight playing it. <laughs> that was video games before. That is not how about the first? Go ahead. Gold yeah. Sun was the first JRPG I ever played that let me use magic outside of combat. <laughs> yeah. Aside aside from healing spells. How about Orphan? Uh, I'm actually not familiar with that one. 
It's a PS2 game. All right, let's let's go back to the to Super Nintendo era then. Uh, Lufia. I I know. You know. Lufia. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that one up because I'm not. I'm drawing a blank. That was a that was another. Uh, I don't want to say dungeon crawl, but it was an RPG with. Uh, with a lot of puzzle solving. It was almost closer to a Zelda with turn-based That's... I'd be down for that. <laughs> now, up. Here, here's something that we didn't really touch base with much in the RPG one. Do we prefer turn-based combat or fluid combat? I've always honestly, preferred uh, turn base for RPG. I, 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 I honestly, either way, um, I, I like the uh, action-based combat of Kingdom Hearts, but I also love the turn-based combat of staples of like the Persona series, or you know, Ed, <laughs> pick a Final Fantasy. Well, certain Final Fantasy, the later that you got with the titles, you actually started to step away from the turn-based system, and it went into a more fluid-based combat engine. And some of them actually made it possible for you to be able to turn either option on. Yeah, but then as you got later on, they, they didn't even have the option for you to turn the options on. It just became, you know, button mash action, mm -hmm. as opposed to active time base or weight. Uh, right base, so which we, I think we, I think it finally died at twelve. I think I think that's where they finally completely. I think, I think that was one of the downfalls of twelve. Actually, was that the only person you control was the leader of the party. You had no control over the rest of the party. With uh, things, you got really, in, in my opinion, you got really two options of turn-based games. You got the standard Final Fantasy setup where. It's, you know, your party versus the other party, and then you just kind of choose, and then they, they kind of go after each other and, and hit each other and whatnot, and then it, it's kind of a linear thing where it's like, it's your offense, your defense kind of setup, and then you've got turn-based strategy games where you have more of like a chess-like setup where you, you take control of the character, you move them to a certain part of the map, and then and then go from there. That right there that that chest like setup of a, of a, of a turn-based strategy is my favorite type of turn-based strategy and, and my favorite example of that is uh is shining force and shining force 2 i i grew up on those games they're amazing and uh i i i don't know it's 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 I, I never got into Final Fantasy, and I, I think the reason why is because it had that turn base where it was it was just very linear, where they'd have you choose your character. they choose a character, choose what you want them to do, and then they, they do it against the enemy. I, I don't know. I didn't care much for that, that setup. And it's, it's, what, it's what early Shining, Shining in the Darkness did. It's what games like Sword of Vermilion did. Oh. Um, well, again, yeah, that, Final Fantasy kind of Tactics. That's, that's kind of a thing okay. that, that, that JRPGs uh, aren't afraid to mess with, is JRPGs love to play around with the combat system. Because uh, even even in games like, say, Kingdom Hearts, where it, it was the original game was a action-based combat system, they definitely played around with the combat system uh, for mobile, like Chain of Memories or Coded. We don't talk about Chain of Memories. It just has a really the chain of memory chain of, battle no, system no, 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 I have no, no, ever no. played. We can talk about Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. We don't talk about re chain of memories. <laughs> memories combat system worked on the Game Boy Advance. When they ported it to the PlayStation 2, it was fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't you can't take a, a, a combat system designed for a handheld 2D system and turn it into a 3D fucking game. It's just not gonna work. Uh, you can, um, but then there's your problem. It just don't work. Um, Final Fantasy three comes to mind. 
Your argument is invalid. <laughs> let, 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 let me hate on the chain of memories. Yeah, you can, you can hate you on just chain of memories all you want, but saying, saying porting over a 2D into a 3D uh, style game doesn't work. Uh, Final Fantasy 3 already proved you're wrong. He's not wrong. Hey, he's got a point. Um, <laughs> oh, I had a thought I was going to do, and then we derailed. Um, <laughs> a fantasy topic where we talked about J. We were talking about how JRPGs aren't afraid to, to mess around with the combat system. Um, the fucking Mega Man Battle Network ga- uh, games. Yeah. A super, super different combat system that literally had you, like, picking different lines to fight your enemies. And it, it was it was partially real-time, partially turn-based. Are we talking like fucking Yu-Gi-Oh's Duelist of Bros? Where you actually had to move the monsters? <laughs> no, no, no. What? No. For, for the Mega Man Battle Network games, it was like a three by four grid, and you had to like pick a lane, and that was the lane you were attacking down. But you also still had the turn-based element of picking what what attack you were going to do on your turn, and and you had enemies moving within lanes. You know what? I, I'm starting to realize that this. Episode- even though it's supposed to be JRPG, it is almost like the fucking episode of South Park, where every time Butters tried to come up with something, and, and all like his his uh, little mascot turned around. Samson's did it. Samson. Every time you open your mouth, all I'm hearing is Final Fantasy. Well, the, the Battle of Fort Condor in Final Fantasy VII was the well, exact same fucking thing. Would it help if I say my name in this genre? Sure, sure. It's please. not Final Fantasy. Sure. sure. Tales of Symphonia, actually. The story in that one just enraptured me for a long time. The series is good. Yeah, the Tales of Symphonia is just beautifully done. I, I, I wanted to pick up Tales of Zestria for a little bit. I gotta get I gotta pick up that one and play it, because like it's been years since it came out. How about the Valkyrie for- games? I've seen yeah. them, I've never played them. I watched somebody else play him. It was it's enjoyable to watch from a view side of things. God, I haven't thought about those in a long time. Valkyria, You're welcome. Val- Valkyria Chronicles. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, because I used to like watching my cousin play those. Oh my god! I I, I had I had a, a fucking what a Game Boy dual screen, and one of the games it came with because I, I bought it at a garage sale was uh, Chronicles of Valkyria and uh-huh. I, I tried to play it and, and I, I couldn't I, I tried my best I just I couldn't get into it but you know I've always I've always been uh, uh, on the fence about this one on whether it's a art a JRPG or a uh, real-time strategy game Advance Wars I'm lost I'm not familiar with it don't know it uh, Sam has got an opinion. That's a turn-based strategy game, 100%. I loved Advanced Wars, but that is definitely turn-based. Yeah, it's it, it's turn-based strategy, but like, it's definitely got a bunch of JRPG elements to it, at least as far as storyline goes. <laughs> yeah. How about uh, uh, Lost Odyssey? Lost Odyssey? That, but yeah. just but. poke back in Advance Wars. If we're gonna call Advance Wars a JRPG, then we'd have to call uh, uh, Fire Emblem a JRPG. I would agree with that. Yep. Yeah, I, I could I could agree with Fire Emblem being under the JRPG umbrella. No, oh, fine, that, for me. Th- this was one that I was actually a little uh, bit nervous to mention in the last episode. But Zephyr, back back me up or knock me down on this. Digimon Cyber Sleuth. No, that's definitely a JRPG. Yeah. One hundred percent. Was I dumped so many hours into that and its sequel? It, it it's obnoxious. On that. Cyber Sleuth is Persona with Digimon. And that's probably why I love both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! Uh, if 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 you haven't yet, 
and, and, and you ever get the chance, uh, UA, you need to play the original Persona. Haven't had a chance yet. You've been nagging me on that one for years. I will get on that one as soon as I can. The oh. final boss is amazing. How about uh, uh, Legend of Dragoon? I've heard of it. I've never heard of it, though. Good game. Great, great game. Uh, actually, I, I have I have a question of, is it a uh, JRPG? Uh, Resonance of Fate. Don't know it. Don't. Really? Sorry, dude. It looks like you're preaching to the, an empty audience on that one. Ah, uh, hang on. Google it. It's time to Google. I want to see something. The last episode we had tons to talk about. This episode we don't. So I think the Western's winning. Oh, the Western's winning. Fuck yeah. Did we ever clarify um, of Castlevania as, as a JRPG? We never even touched. Oh, did, did we? Did we... All, all we all we agreed we covered... was Symphony of the Night and uh, and and uh, uh, Simon's Quest were RPGs, but we never classified whether they were Japanese or not. Being, being... Steve for a second and sure. question and ask who's putting pop up ads on our chat. <laughs> <laughs> That would be Zephyr trying to get paid. I was going to say, that, that's Zephyr being cheeky. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I... Cover art for yeah, the, the game I was talking about. Resonance of Fate. Like, I'm, I'm, pretty sure it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a JRPG. Oh my god, I have something to say in the conversation. I, I, I do too for, now, because for, I know those games better for, than you. For, for real quickly, for reference to the rest of our panelists and the audience... Salem here is a Belmont by more than just one name. I, I am a Belmont. My my last name is Belmont. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Belmont by association. Get ready to dive into bats, folks. Holy, this is going to be good. Holy crap, they made a game on my family? What? <laughs> and the art in our house is all Belmont. Oh, and, my uh, God. Yeah, we kind of have an addiction to the, this. The there, there is only, there is only one one family of backwater hicks crazy enough to see the avatar of evil and open with a haymaker. <laughs> Belmont, how you doing? How's the family? That is so... Uh, by the way, avatar of chaos. Yes, I will correct you every single sentence. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but enough of this. Have at you! Ah, <laughs> uh, man. <laughs> oh, Castlevania references. I've already <laughs> Yes, I did that in approximation of Alucard from uh, Helsing Abridged. Yes, yeah. I know. And I'm sad. Which is Because that is the, thing, that is the only to voice to do that in. <laughs> but no, if it's Castlevania, we can t give you hours of conversation. Oh, my God. Time I've docked into Symphony. Dude, I, I could talk for hours oh. about Persona. Are you kidding me? Well, real, real quickly, before we dive into Persona, because I, I want to stay on Castlevania for just a minute, we before the podcast started, we were actually watching the latest Death Battle, and it's Dracula from Castlevania versus Ganondorf from Legend of Zelda. I'm not going to do any spoilers for it. It but is well done. Damn! The really boys at, at Death Battle did good on that one well here's the thing they and i'm, I'm not going to give away who wins who loses blah 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 but what i will say is that the results of the death battle could have easily changed if they wanted to throw in some of the uh um how dracula is in the more non-canon versions of castlevania such as castlevania lords of shadow where you have Gabriel Belmont uh, actually becoming the reincarnation of, Cap uh, of, of Dracula. Uh, that, that I would say, uh, would really stem the tide, in, in my opinion, in, in a much more different way. Mm. Uh, Lords of Shadow, I, I gotta be honest with you, man. I love Castlevania. I'm, I'm a fucking Belmont. Lords of Shadow can eat my anus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got a, I got a Castlevania question for you because my memory again I'm old, um, but my you know. of like 
Castlevania II Diamond's Quest was that it was probably one of my more favorite of the trilogy that was on the 8-bit Nintendo. I mean, it's your favorite. If you like heading a hernia playing a video game, go ahead. <laughs> well, that, that's my point. Is like, is it really as bad as people claim it to be, or is my memory correct on like it was actually a better game than it gave them credit absolutely you can't beat that game unless you do shit at random and go oh fuck that worked because it's it's just like there's there's a part of castlevania 2 simon's quest where like you have to throw holy water at the ground just to know that it's like either it's 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 a a ground that you can that you fall through or a ground that's solid And, and and you don't know this you don't fucking know this you're just walking forward and then boom you fall or you're walking forward, you throw holy water at nothing and go, oh shit, the holy water went through. I have to jump over this. And like nothing in that game tells you to do that. And, and, and Castlevania Simon's Quest 2, I, 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 or Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, I loved it. Don't get me wrong. But there's a bunch of shit in that game where you just kind of, you, you kind of sit there and you scream at, at, at the game like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And then you Google it. And I, I hate games like that where you got to Google it. Well, and here here's yeah. the thing that I'm going to counter on that real quickly. Of the game this came was, out before Google. Exactly. <laughs> this was it He's came, out before, it came out before Google, be, but I'm, I'm 26 ah, years old. I'm where's baby. my issue of Nintendo power? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't have a Nintendo because my family was, was poor. <laughs> well, what about what about everybody well, he else? He still plays a Sega Genesis in the living room. Okay? I have a Sega Genesis. It's right over there. I still <laughs> blow into my cartridges. It makes such a nice noise. <laughs> oh, trust me. If, if there's anyone who is not going to bash you on that, it's going to be Anvil because he's got every console under the sun almost. Hey, every Nintendo system, system that they on. ever made. Yep. You you want to play Oregon Trail with me? We can do it. Like I've got my how? Oregon Trail. I have the Oregon Trail card game. Like how I am playing that game. No, no, game. I have it on cassette. I want to play the Oregon Trail <laughs> card game. Can we... Can we I had it? it on floppy disk. <laughs> I have it on cassette. I got when he it. says floppy disk, he means five and a quarter drive. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah! Three and a half inch floppy disk. Because I still have the Commodore Vic 20, 64, we, 28. Let's rock. We, 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 had it, we had it for Commodore 64. Yes, I had it for Commodore 64, and by the time it booted it up, you died of dysentery. <laughs> In real life. Welcome to JRPGs, man. Oregon Trail, motherfucker. <laughs> but no, let me get let me get everybody Oregon else's opinion on that. Oregon Trail is the greatest JRPG ever. I think it would argue the point that Oregon Trail, it, you know, it, from this it, episode, Oregon Trail really is the greatest RPG, period. East and or, West. I, or, or, Trail is the greatest JRPG. It fits all of the criteria we've established so far. It's a linear storyline. It has a oh, it, has, it has, has an esoteric <laughs> combat system. What combat system? Shooting fucking deer for dinner? <laughs> hey, there was buffalo and bears too. <laughs> You just don't understand because you're a baby. It's okay. I'm a wee widow, babe. It's all right. Some of us were born a lot long. Sorry for not choosing when I was born, you motherfucker. It's okay. I still love you. You heard, you heard it here first, folks. Oregon Trail is the greatest JRPG of all time. I want to argue that so goddamn much, but since I've never played it, my opinion's invalid. Oh, you motherfucker. You don't know nothing. I've never played an Until Oregon Trail have title. All the, all the text in these big, blocky white letters, you don't know nothing. Oh, my gosh. I, I, feel, I feel like I just ran in here with a plucked chicken screaming, Behold, a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my We're God. sitting here doing this episode. I just run in with a with a with an old five by sixteen floppy of Oregon Trail. Behold, the JRPG. Yeah. And I would play it. Uh, all <laughs> yes! of, all of a right. sudden, I had that episode of uh, fucking South Park in my head of the World of Warcraft episode where Randy's running around with the fucking uh, stick yeah, drive. That was- that was the only episode I've watched of that show, and I liked it. <laughs> it is up to me to save the world of Warcraft. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so, uh, 
game system question. But I don't. I, I. I think we may have already covered it. But like, what are some of our favorite JRPGs and why? Why do we like them so much? So, Salem, I. I think this is gonna be a hard question for you to answer. So why don't you just get it out of the way? Fuck. Uh, I'm actually not going to answer the way that you think I'm going to answer. I absolutely loved the Shining series growing up, and I will always love the Shining series, and I'll always go back to it, just much like the Castlevania series, but the Shining series definitely did it in for me with, with JRPGs, just because it was so balanced in such a nice way, and, and the stories were so great, and I loved them so much, and yes, I love Castlevania, I do, but the, the Shining series really, really just hits it out of the ballpark for me, and if you guys haven't played it well, you're too late. No, come into our living room. We have <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, I mean, if you really want me, I'll take my belt off now. And come no, 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 don't come, yeah. don't come in the living room. <laughs> You uh, wait, you wait, what do we got? What do we got? There is no sex in the champagne room. <laughs> <laughs> no way you take in the same house. house. <laughs> so for, for me this this actually is not that difficult of a question. Uh, Final Fantasy is what got me into the JRPG title with Crisis Core and Final Fantasy X. But it wasn't until a little known game called Kingdom Hearts came out and that entire series just I I happily waited the 13 years for Kingdom Hearts 3 to come out and I waited patiently and I unlike a lot of people still even today was not disappointed with that title and the entire series as a whole yes it's not perfect but for me that series is absolutely one of the most timeless JRPG series that is still around today. I'm sorry, you, I couldn't hear you over you choking on Sora's dick. We watch his levels at the beginning of every game because I suck it out of him. We, uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, Damn, he's swallowing experience. We got, more, we, got more stuff. <laughs> we got more stuff for Kingdom Hearts coming, too. We got the Re Remind DLC dropping this winter. I am so so excited! Oh, maybe we'll finally get some fucking answers out of Nomura. I doubt it, but hey, who knows? <laughs> All right, Andrew, that, that, your that's turn. Pro that's probably one of the things I hate most about Tetsuya Nomura as a game director is he always raises more questions than he fucking answers. So he's he's a Japanese J.J. Abrams. Exactly. Oh, hard to argue that fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Dusty. And Bill, what about you? Oh, well. No, go oh. ahead. Sorry, we skipped Dusty. That's okay. I, I'm the only girl here. It's easy to do. Oh, uh, no, you were you were playing with your phone, so we thought we'd leave you alone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, all right, all right. Kind of like I the said mine's, tales, mine's tales of Symphonia because the story was so beautiful. It was because it's the only JRPG <laughs> she's ever fucking Not played. true, but it's also the one reason why I started cosplaying. So... Uh, oh, let's okay. not get into that. That it is though, because oh. the music, the story, everything was great. My friend goes, you know what? We should cosplay this. And the next thing I know, we we branched off from that because we found we couldn't make those costumes way too hard, and we moved on to a different cosplay. But still, it's the reason why I got started in it. <laughs> All right, now on to Anvil. My favorite JRPG. That is a difficult question. Uh. Hmm. Probably, probably Final Fantasy, but I can't tell you which one would be my favorite of the Final Fantasies. That's only because there's like two million. Oh, I <laughs> right. Answer that. That's including the branch offs. <laughs> All right. Uh... Well, here's what? the question. So by the the criteria you've laid down, Zelda would qualify as a JRPG, right? Oh, yes, yeah. it does. <laughs> <laughs> no, we it does. It does. Well, actually, not necessarily. Well, actually, no. Earlier it incarnations, was originally Breath, released in Japan. Breath of, now. Breath of the Wild would not qualify as a JRPG at this time. Because oh. Breath of the Wild has no linear storyline. It is 
go, go off, do whatever the fuck you want, and take on Ganon at your leisure. Um, for earlier incarnations of the Zelda series, definitely would qualify as JRPGs. Yeah. It has linear storyline, has its its own combat system that's loosely based off of other combat systems, and uh, it was made in Japan. Then I would definitely go with Zelda. Uh, if we're not going to count Zelda, then I would probably go with Golden Sun. I, I would say let's not count Zelda just for you, for you because it's low hanging fruit for you. <laughs> you literally have it tattooed on your arm. I I do in fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. What about you? What's your favorite JRPG? Let me tell you a story about a little boy who was uh, getting Christmas gifts and. When he opened up a whole bunch of Christmas gifts, he got his typical uh, games that he really enjoyed on his 8-bit Nintendo. Things like Mario Brothers 3 and Mega Man 2, and he was really, really happy. But then his uncle came and gave him a, a Christmas present that he opened up, and it was this little black box called Final Fantasy. And this little boy looked at it and said, oh, that's great, and threw it in a corner and forgot about it for about a year. A year later, he's out of games to play because he's beat all the games he's got and he's, he's just bored and he's clean, actually cleaning up his room and he stumbles across the Final Fantasy and he says, eh, what the fuck? Finally breaks the cellophane, pops in. And that literally changed his life to the point that he got into RPGs. He got into Dungeons and Dragons. He got into, you know, role-playing in general. So it's, it's a no-duh. Final Fantasy literally is the greatest game I've ever played. As a franchise, but especially the first game. I feel that. That's sort of how I feel about A Link to the Past. Because that was the first video game I ever played. Ever. I was at my uh, my dad's aunt, my dad's aunt's house. Uh, and uh, they had a super, a super Nintendo Entertainment su- System in their den. Okay. And uh, my older sister played uh, Mario... Like, it was going out of style. I never really got into it. I didn't have the patience or the attention span to follow countless just repetitive jump over the mushroom, jump on the turtle, jump over the mushroom, jump on the turtle. (laughs) But then I plugged in a different game when Kelly stopped playing it, which took a while. Uh, I plugged in a different game. The first game I picked up, and it was The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and it was an adventure and it told a story and i i don't know i just that was it for me i was video games video games were my life then <laughs> <laughs> it. yeah video. another victim I, so that's the way most of us are i mean when i first started playing my game which i'm not gonna say what it was because you guys really think i'm old pong fine pong same here it was pong <laughs> I had an Atari when it first came out, and it just, you get hooked, and the next thing you know, you're playing Diamond Mine, and then you move up into the Labyrinth, and, you know, Oregon Trail, and then you move to Cuber, and the next thing you know, you're doing City of Heroes and can't stop. And now you bitch at your wife anytime she talks when you're trying to fucking play a game, and you're like, oh my god, shut up! Okay. Yeah. You, Boss! You guys keep talking about, like, aging yourselves. You want to know what my first video game was? This is going to be good. Mine was on a black and white TV. Dig Dug. My Dig Dug. Dig Dug. Pong, Pong beats Dig Dug. I just let you yes, know. It does. It does beat yeah, Pong it. beats Dig Dug by a lot. Paddles and roll ball. <laughs> Look, the first. Mo- my point. My point is being that most people haven't even heard of Dig Dug. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I love leeching quarters out of my mom to play Dig Dug. So. <laughs> Are you kidding right. me? My first game console was an Atari 2600, and yes, I did own a fucking ET cartridge, okay? Well, see, now, see my, first, my first Atari had no cartridges. It was just two paddles on the side, a rollerball, and a bunch of Pong stuff. That was all it was. First console for me was a Sega Genesis that wasn't even mine. It was my father's. Sonic and Tails. Oh, God. I, oh, I, oh. I broke that cartridge. Oh, no, I lied. I lied. My first video game wasn't Dig Dug. It was Professor Quandry. You know what? Think of like, the first video game I ever actually played. Not on console, just in general. The first game I ever played was uh, 
Popeye, the stand-up arcade game. Okay. Yeah. Well, of course, Anvil's going to have a hard-on for that. Anyway, <laughs> it, 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 we, got, we got off rails again. Um, my favorite... Actually, I think it's a little bit further off rail, and it's not quite a JRPG. I guess it's more of a dungeon crawler. But it was a fantastic game and shocked me that it was such a good game. Was the uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was one of those. It was a game that came as a prize in the kids' meal from uh, Taco Bell in the '90s, <laughs> the late '90s. It was on a floppy disk, and it was uh, a dungeon crawler. I'm trying to remember what it was called, but it was good. It was like a shockingly addictive. Uh, <laughs> and sat on that taco. Seriously, yeah. Oh, hey, do you have that movie that had that guy that was out in that film last year? <laughs> That's literally what Anvil just gave us. In, in in the late 90s, they gave us a floppy disk of a game that was kind of a dungeon crawler, and it was really addictive, but I don't know what it was called. Taco I mean, Bell. It was called Taco Bell something something. Oh, oh come I on. remember now. I had that too. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, and I had diarrhea. <laughs> Well, no, it was Taco, Taco Bell. Hell. Oh, I'm sorry, anyway, Taco Bell. Actually, I do remember a uh, Seven Up uh, video game. I think there was an actual RPG of the spot, uh, Seven Up spot yes, too. There was yes, the there spot. was. Yes, there was. Uh, anyway, back on track. Uh, my favorite JRPG series, as much as I love Kingdom Hearts, I have to say Persona because. Uh, I, there, there hasn't been a game in the Persona series that I haven't loved yet, including the spinoffs. Like, cause they, and they've done some crazy fucking spinoffs. Like, they've, they've had a Persona fighting game. They have a Persona dancing game. Um, but uh, uh, honestly, my per- uh, I gotta say, my personal favorite spinoff Persona game would probably uh, Persona Q: Shadow of the Labyrinth. Because they basically they basically made a dungeon crawler persona game that you had to draw your own map as you went along, which I thought was fun. Um, but like I I just I love how the series continues to evolve and have different stories told. It's kind of like Final Fantasy a bit in a, in a way of it's it changes the formula with each game, but still maintains that central identity. So your favorite Final Fantasy is eight, and your favorite JRPG is Persona. You have a thing for high school, don't you? Yep. He's nostalgic, just a wee <laughs> bit. I think I think it's I think it's the sailor uniform that the girls wear. There it is. <laughs> Do I have it? What the heck? The the moment as it dawns on his head. Oh, a soft <laughs> but like, can be but like the, from the, short the, black hair. The school portion, portions of those games are not even my favorites. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be... They clearly I'm are. Gonna, I'm going to be completely honest. I 100% Google the answers for all the uh, Persona uh, question, school, school day questions so I can get that sweet, sweet knowledge. Which is really funny because yet again you're proving your age because when Persona 1 came out there was still no Google. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 anybody I, else remember I, making I, curtains from the from the American Online discs? I, I will I will admit I, I did not I I definitely played Shin Megami Tensei Persona uh, way after it came out. And no, I never made curtains with them. I used them as coasters. <laughs> I never. I will. Def- I will definitely say that um, playing the actual original uh, translated Japanese release of uh, Persona One was an eye opener because I played. I played the uh, um, American release first, and then I found. Then I found an actual translated Japanese copy. Uh, yeah, the final boss is definitely not who I thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> this will keep us on the JRPG topic, but I'm actually very, very curious. Which boss did we hate the most? Sephiroth. Sephiroth. Anvil? 
What? JRPG boss we hated the most. <laughs> so far, it's two uh, votes for Sephiroth. <laughs> I don't know. Well, to be boss specific... I hated the most. Probably Sephiroth. Sephiroth, yeah. A lot. Me, I, I, I'm, I'm a full-blooded American, man. I... JRPGs are time. Really, about. Mr. Belmont? Okay, fine. Liar! <laughs> D- Dusty. I-, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't play these games either. You're such full shit. <laughs> okay, so we're all in agreement that su- the silver haired bastard of Final Fantasy VII, who makes more cameo appearances in JRPG titles than any other character I can think of, is the biggest bitch of a fighter fights that we he's can like, deal with. He's like the Stan Lee of Square Enix. <laughs> You know, to be fair, though, it's like Sephiroth as a character you love to hate, because I loved Seth- Sephiroth as a character, but first time I saw Supernova go off, that was the end of it. Seriously, what's up with these pop-up ads? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's your Taco Bell Oh, game. man. My, uh... <laughs> fuck it. Fighting Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts 1, and then fighting him again in Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh! oh. <laughs> Frustration. I, I, before Kingdom Hearts 3 dropped, I, I did a playthrough of all of the games to get myself uh, caught up, because obviously frickin' 13 years had passed, I wanted to make sure I was fresh. Uh, for Kingdom Hearts 2, playing through, I decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm finally gonna do it. I'm gonna level myself all the way to 99 for the first time ever oh. in, in a Kingdom Hearts game, because <laughs> I've never <laughs> needed to. <laughs> I walked. I walked into the fucking Sephiroth fight I and curb stomped it. Yeah, it's like curb stomped it. Anvil, are you okay over there? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my father-in-law came over, <laughs> and Char's standing right here. But I heard a voice coming from the other end of the house, and I was like, "Am I losing my mind?" And then I realized that no one's here. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, like I, I, I leveled myself all the way up to 99. I got as high as I possibly could fucking go. I did the grind, and I walked into the Sephiroth fight in Kingdom Hearts 2, and I fucking curb stomped him. He <laughs> you was know what? So easy. I take it back. Probably the worst one I ever fought was the last boss, the final boss of... Uh, uh, Super Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. Black? Count uh, black. not black. The, uh, the lady that, the demon that possessed, uh, uh, Peach. If you skip, if you tried to avoid battle throughout the whole game, which most people did, then, like, trying to beat her was impossible. Okay. <laughs> um, I so found Sep- I, I showed up at her doorstep at level twenty five and yeah. Se- Sephiroth Sephiroth definitely wins for the most hated JRPG boss. Um, for the worst RPG boss I've ever or JRPG boss I've ever fought, uh, just because they freaking steamrolled me every freaking time. Um. Gosh, why am I blanking on the name? Uh, Which game? Uh, I think it was uh, Golden Sun. Uh, it was one of the late game uh, bosses. I know who you're talking about. Ah, uh, crap. I was blanking. No matter what combination of gin I did, they always fucking steamrolled me. I'd have to say Gilgamesh Final Fantasy V. Yeah. Gilgamesh! We should have had notes. Which, thankfully, they dumped him down in Final Fantasy XII and made him easier to beat, because he was a bitch in Final Fantasy V. Um, I know uh, the, the, boss, the boss battle with... Um, Oh, frack. What's his name from Persona 4? Um, voiced by fucking Johnny Young Bosch. 
that you're gonna kick your ass when you figure it out. Damn it. Because the rest of us don't know. <laughs> I keep thinking Akechi, but that's Persona 5. No, I don't want to look Persona 5. I want Persona 4. Um, da, 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 da. What the heck was his name? Adachi. Adachi. Uh, you worked that hard for that? It is it, it, Adachi. The boss fight with Adachi was fucking annoying as all hell. So what was so bad about Itchy Wang? <laughs> Itchy Wang? What? Actually, it's a, it, actually it's a story. I used to work for a carpet cleaning company, and they used to cold call people, what so people to the telemarket, hell? and and one of the people's names that was on the cold call list, I caught it caught it out of the corner of my eye, and I couldn't stop laughing. Was Itchy Wang? <laughs> I C H I W A N G. Oh my god! No, but the, the, in Persona Four, the, bo the boss fight against Adachi is just so annoying. And he's got like this this alternate version of your own persona. It's so fucking dumb. Alternate version of your own persona? You mean like a doppelganger? Oh, like my twin. Shut the fuck. Kind of. Jesus. It god. has. It has a different name, so it's totally different. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that, okay. It has a different sure. name. You are facing you are facing imp A and imp B. They're different because they're A and B. Uh -huh. <laughs> God. So so I think that this podcast is starting to dematerialize in front of us because. For all of our audio listeners, uh, Anvil found himself some chicken feet, and well, he's occupying himself quite a lot, which is why you keep hearing the kid giggles. Yep. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not using those chicken feet. To be fair, I have two hands right here. Look, look, we're gonna keep. It on, <laughs> Hi, Char. We're, we're gonna we're gonna keep it on JRPG <laughs> here. He's just quiet and entertained because he found a picture of Tifa. <laughs> <laughs> Another potsicle. Seven's remake. All right, let's back to the breaking back to just straight RPGs. Hardest boss ever is fucking Sans from Undertale. Because he, because he fucking cheats. I don't know. I I I know Sans is a real pain in the ass. But I mean, Flowey ain't that easy either. I don't know. I hate his cousin, Comic Sans. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's he's named Sans. His text font is Comic Sans. Oh yeah. fuck it! I, I I ain't playing that game. <laughs> hey, have you? Oh man, no. Sans Sans is like the hardest boss I've ever fought against. I still haven't beaten him because he straight up cheats. Because you can't hit him until you wear him down to like the the, the last stage of the boss fight. He will he will dodge every time. Guys, you're making me think of uh, thinking of, about Final Fantasy 13 and uh, when you when you try to get Odin, and the way to beat uh. Odin is to not fight him. <laughs> 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 Just stand there and let him beat the shit out of you. Yep. A strange game. I, I remember that fight. The only way to win is to not play. <laughs> God almighty. And people wonder why they didn't like Final Fantasy thirteen all that much. Dude, that game got such a bad rap. I actually thoroughly enjoyed that game because it was my first real idea of an open world RPG. Because some of the other ones I had played, yes, they were... They were open-ish, but this was the biggest map that I had experienced, and I thoroughly enjoyed that game. You, you know what's funny is uh, technically out of the, n the numbered Final Fantasies, not the spin-offs, but out of the numbered Final Fantasies, 13 is the only one I've never beaten. Really? Really? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get past the, the, the big boss. Huh. That, that was me with seven for so many years. It wasn't until I did one of my playthroughs on the Switch when it got ported to the Switch. 
I finally managed to beat Sephiroth and get that satisfaction. I mean, I've got it in Xbox One now, backwards compatted uh, Final Fantasy XIII, finally. I've been playing it again. I intend to get, you know, to correct that problem. But yeah, right, as it stands right now, Final Fantasy XIII is the only one I have not completed. All right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it, 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 that speaks oh volumes for thirteen. What? Last episode, we all, we missed another really popular title. Uh oh. What? Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed. Oh my God. I don't that, class. I don't classify that, that as an RPG. About. I don't know if I classify that as an RPG. That's that, an action doesn't game. Have, doesn't have doesn't have a leveling system. That's true. There's no leveling system. He's right. you, just, you only you only upgrade your equipment. That's it. Fair enough. I yeah. I would I would classify Assassin's Creed along the lines of something like Metal. Actually, on right. that on that thing, Monster Hunter is not an RPG because it doesn't have a leveling system. You just upgrade your equipment. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, I, you win this time. <laughs> I'll get you, Gadget. <laughs> Jesus, that was good. <laughs> that, that, no, seriously, man, that was very well done. I'm pretty Thank happy you. right now. <laughs> I mean, as far as far as voice acting goes, Doctor Claw is not that hard to attain. <laughs> Let me give the man a compliment, man. Come on. I'll me? be impressed. I'll be impressed when 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 Chris rips out Starscream. Which rendition? <laughs> Me uh, and I use it in Big Doo Doo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's time to end the podcast. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh. I'm actually sitting here trying to see if I can actually get my throat constricted enough to do Starscream. And I keep laughing. <laughs> yeah, you gotta save your throats for later tonight, man. Yeah, but <laughs> are you asking me to? My, am I not tight enough for you? <laughs> no, you're not. Not, not I'm, saying you're I'm... saying you're loose. I'm just saying it's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're in a seven foot am. Look, I'm not trying to say you're small. I'm just trying to say a 747 looks small next to a next to the Grand Canyon, okay? Uh, <laughs> All right, Chris, where can they find you? Right next. To me. No, I can't do it right now. I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> the fuck was that? You're, you're gonna hurt yourself, dude. Don't do it. I think I just gave myself an aneurysm. <laughs> You guys can find me here at Realm of the Mist Entertainment or at our sister channel of Sounds Dicey Gaming playing Ferran Take Donalus, the neurotic uh, ranger who really doesn't like bards. And, of course, you can find me wherever quality podcasts can be heard. All right. Anvil, where can they find you? Usually looking for food. <laughs> if that's not the truest statement I've heard, I don't know what is. You can also find me in Dagger here or... Uh, Right here, I guess. Now. Yeah, if you become a regular guest. We'll see. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, so, UA, where, UA, where can they find you? Uh, Seneca Niagara Casino, hating my life every single day for six days a week, eight hours a day. But <laughs> outside of that, uh, you can find me at Twitter at the handle at Blackwing <laughs> Roman. 13. Same with my Twitch handle, Black Wings Roman Numeral 13. You can also find me on Facebook under the handle of Josh Wilson. And I mean, as soon as I'm able, I hope to be a regular on this fantastic podcast and continue to give my opinion. Oops. As he breaks his phone. <laughs> All right. I got on fire. Where can they find you? Hey, woman, Dusty. You can find Dusty making my fucking lunch. Yes, I was just doing that, actually. <laughs> I made you. You can find me delivering beer all across the city of Rome, New York. Ah, Rome, New York, where nothing fucking happens. Don't forget East Utica. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> let's, let's not talk about East Utica. It find, doesn't exist. Seriously, you can find us swinging swords at different run fairs on the East Coast. We're the Knights of Cyprium, and we hope to be on this podcast and maybe have our own soon. Yeah, we're working on our own podcast. It's going to be called 
something. We'll, we'll work on that. Sal and Dusty. Yeah, good enough. It's a work in progress. And Zach, where can we find your lovely face? As always, you can find me here as your host, Zephyr Zero, and you can also find me over on our sister channel, Sounds Dicey, playing Billy Knoll, the resident annoying bard. But only for a or two. I mean, hi. hi. <laughs> I don't give three line secrets. Rocks Boy, fall, my pretty dies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> This has been another great episode of Press A Gaming Podcast, and remember to press A for more great gaming content. See you next time. Later. Bye.